This is part five of six on our video series on the introduction to programming. In this video, we take a look at string handling. So string manipulation is the act of manipulating, extracting, or changing the characters in a string variable. Let's have a look at a few real applications of where you might use this. So in our first example, let's consider an online form. So you can see here we've got a first name field and a last name field. And the user is, of course, able to type in their name in any format they like. They may just accidentally be slipping on a shift key or a caps lock. Here I've exaggerated the situation, but you can see the name Craig Sargent has been entered with a mixture of lower and uppercase characters. We may require internally that the first letter of each name is capital and the rest are then lowercase, regardless of how it's been typed in. So we would need to perform some string manipulation on the contents that have come in. We would need to extract the first letter from the entered strings and convert it to uppercase. We would need to extract all the remaining letters from the strings, convert them to lowercase, and then join or concatenate the two parts back together again. In this example, we're looking at a typical search engine and considering something called text parsing. You might be used to being able to type in phrases such as six centimetres in inches and then the result appearing on the screen. Well, six centimetre in inches would be a string and the search engine would then have to parse this string and manipulate it to provide a sensible output. It would have to be able to extract the number six from the string extract the character centimetres, extract the character inches, and then run some algorithm to understand what needs to be done. Consider the situation of a train ticket. In this example, train station names have to be abbreviated to a set number of characters so they can fit on a printed ticket. With long train station names, for example, London Paddington, the string would need to be manipulated, so we end up with London, P-A-D-D-I-N-G-T-N. -D -D and again, this would be an example of string manipulation. So string functions are often built into a programming language to manipulate the string data type. There are many string functions that can be used within any given language. Two are specifically mentioned in the OCR pseudocode guide, so we'll cover those first. The first is the dot length. So the dot length function is a function you can append to a string. So you'd use string name dot length. So here you can see I've got a variable called some text and I've set it to computer science. And then I'm saying print some text dot length. Well, some text is a variable and you can see here it contains the text computer space science and dot length literally reports the number of characters, including spaces, of course, that are in that variable. The second string manipulation command specifically mentioned in the OCR pseudocode guide is dot substring. Now you notice here dot substring takes a couple of parameters, starting position and number of characters. So we say some text dot substring. Well, some text is the string computer space science. So some text dot substring, then we supply at the starting position. Now this is not the third character long in the string, it's the character at position three. So it's actually the fourth character along as you can see here. And then the second parameter is a number, and that's the number of characters that we want to extract starting with the starting position. So we've moved along to index position three, which is the P, and then we extract the three characters P, U, and T. So in this case, some text dot substring bracket three comma three bracket returns put. Now OCR state that any additional functions in an exam question that are not mentioned in the OCR pseudocode guide will be specifically introduced. However, OCR does go on to further explicitly mention a couple of additional string manipulation commands in its clarification document, and they are case conversion and ASCII conversion. 
OK, now we're going to provide these examples in Python because they're not in the OCR specification. They don't actually provide any pseudocode guide as to how these will appear. So the first really is the ability to change strings to upper or lower characters. So in Python, that would be string dot upper. So here we can see we have a first name string that's got the word Craig in lowercase and a last name string that's got sergeant in uppercase. So if I say print first name dot upper, it literally takes every character in the string first name, converts it to uppercase. In a similar way, if I did last name dot lower, it takes every character in the string last name and converts it to lowercase as shown here. Also available in Python is the functions isUpper and isLower, which looks at the contents of a string and returns either true or false. So first name dot isUpper returns false because all the characters in first name are lowercase. Last name dot isUpper is true because all the characters in last name are uppercase. In a similar fashion, first name dot isLower is true whereas last name dot is lower is false. Most languages also supply you with functions that allow you to return the ASCII value of a character or return the character from its ASCII number. So here in the first example, we have a function called ORD that you supply with an ASCII character. So we've said ORD and open brackets, double quotes, capital A, double quotes, close brackets. And you can see it's looking up A in the ASCII character set, and what it returns is the value, which in this case is 65. On the flip side, you can see we can supply an ASCII number or value and return the matching character. So here we've got CHR, char, we supply it with the integer 65 in brackets, that's the parameter, and it returns the matching ASCII character which is capital A. Now here on the screen are some common pseudocoded alternatives. So you can see that although Python uses ORD to return the ASCII value for a character, commonly in zero code, they will use the command ASC. But as long as you're aware of the version from the language that you've been using, you'll be fine for the exams. And any commands like this will be explained in the question. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is string handling in programming? And what are some of the most common string handling operations? We're just going to go over a quick note now about the language guide that's used in your external assessments. So remember, the exam board don't know what language you've been learning to program. So exam questions might use an unfamiliar syntax. Towards the back of the specification for both AS and A level, you'll find Appendix 5D, where the exam board state, the following guide shows the format pseudocode will appear in the examined components. It's provided to allow you to give learners familiarity before the exam. Learners are not expected to memorize the syntax of the pseudocode, and when asked, may provide answers in any style of pseudocode they choose providing its meaning could be reasonably inferred by a competent programmer. So although you don't have to answer in the specific syntax shown in the exam papers, so you are familiar and not thrown in the exam, it's worth downloading a copy of the specification and printing out the appendix. If your school is a Craig and Day subscriber, then ask your teacher for a copy of our student learning and exam support guide. This provides all the information you need in a set of handy reference sheets.